Hi everybody, my name is Daniel Walter Scott and in this video we're going to look at how to clear cut a bit of jewellery and then look to change its colour. So we're going to change the metal from silver to gold or white gold or something similar. Now this question came to me from a student on the website and he's got a really specific need. He doesn't, he's not ready at least to get right into the depths of Photoshop and all the perfect things. So he just wants a really quick step by step to follow as a video to go in. Um, he's taking some photographs of his own uh, jewelry and he wants to kind of clear cut it, put it on a white background and upload it to his website. He also then wants to change the material that it's made from. So make it look like it was uh, silver or gold or um, other kind of uh, precious metals. So, that's what we're going to do here. So we're going to start and look at clear cutting. Now the clear cutting is probably not the most perfect way to do it in Photoshop. And the Photoshop nerd in me really wants to go off and uh, add adjustment layers and all sorts of non-destructive elements to it. But we're going to do it really simple just to keep it really basic for this step. So first of all, we're going to go at file open. So you need to know where your image is. We're going to go file open. I've got mine here. It's a bit of jewelry that I've got off uh, freeimages.com. So first thing we're going to do is it's a little bit gray in the background, so it's not perfectly white. And um, so if I zoom in, so I'm going to hold down control and hit plus key, unless you're on a Mac, hold down the command key and hit plus. And you can see there's a bit of grain along here. So we want to clean that up. So it's pure white to go on the website. So I'm going to zoom out again. So control minus is to zoom out and control plus is to zoom in. Unless you're on a Mac, then it's command minus. So first thing you need to do is you need to make sure that the levels are set. So you want the levels to be, and what the levels are is to make sure that the whites are really strong and the blacks are nice and strong and that the middle tones are nice and even. So if you're shooting indoors with controlled lighting, it can be quite consistent. But if you're shooting with sunlight, you want to kind of make everything look the same and you can do that using levels. So I'm going to go to image, down to adjustments, and I'm going to use levels. Now this looks scary, but it's not particularly. You might have to move it out of the way of your image. And what you want to do is there's a black house and a white house. Okay, so the black house comes up a little bit and you can see if I go too far, it all becomes very black. This image is not bad to start with. Yours might be a lot worse. You might have to drag this gray uh, black slider in a lot more. And so I'm dragging mine in a little bit. The white slider can come in a little bit. And you'll notice that as I drag the white slider in, you see the background became a lot more white. Now, depending on the image, you might not get very far with it. You might have to, uh, you know, you, you will drag this white slider and it won't be perfect. Now there's this gray slider in the middle. Now these end ones tuck in a bit, okay, depending on your image. Now this gray slider here though, this gray slider is really up to you. So watch this. Sometimes it can go right, sometimes it can go left. It really depends on what you want your image to do. Okay, you want to make it a little darker, a little whiter. So I'm going to wiggle around and I'm happy pretty much where it was. So I've done that, click OK. So that's got the kind of whites nice and strong and the blacks nice and strong and that's called levels. Next thing I want to do is clear cut it. So um, in this case, my clear cutting is making sure it's on a white background. Now we're going to do a kind of a caveman version of it to keep it nice and simple. OK, so what we're going to do is grab the brush tool. Here it is here. Now I'm going to hover over here and you can see this is my brush size. So my brush size might need to be a little bigger. So here's the brushes up the top here. So you've got the size and the hardness you're going to be playing around with. So the size, watch this if I crank it up, drag the slider, it gets quite big. Okay, I can go really big. And obviously I can go really small as well. So I'm going to have it about, in this case, this is a guess. You're going to have to change it as you're going around the object. Mine's quite a simple shape, which is going to be nice and easy. So I'm going to pick about 60. In terms of the hardness, now and if it's got a hard edge like this um, bit of jewelry does, you want it hardness up, but never at 100%. Something about kind of nine, between 90 and 95-ish. Okay, will give you a reasonably straight edge, but without it being really super sharp and a little unrealistic. So I'm going to click this little arrow, drop it back in. Now I want to zoom in to get nice and close to it. So I'm going to hit, remember, Control plus or Command plus if you're on a Mac. And great, I'm going to use these little slide bars to move around. Okay, so what I want to do is now make sure white is my foreground color. If it's not, can you see this tiny little black and white option here? Okay, if you click that, it'll make perfect black and perfect white, and they might be around the wrong way. Can you see this little arrow here? It'll switch it around. So you want to make sure white is in the foreground. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to work my way around. Now you can see my one's not working very well because my opacity was set to 30% uh, from something I was doing on the last job. So I'm going to crank that all the way up to 100. And watch this. OK, 
Okay, so this is what I want to do. Now, I'm going to work my way around this document, getting rid of the shadow and getting it onto pure white. Now, I could be here forever if I am trying to click it all the way around. So to help speed things along, what we're going to do is we're going to use the shift key. So to do that, I'm going to show you an example, this nice straight edge here. So what I'm going to do is watch this. If I click once, just click once, that's it. Let go of everything. Now I'm going to move my cursor down to about here. I haven't clicked anything. I'm not dragging. I'm going to hold shift on my keyboard and that does nothing by itself. But then I'm going to click once more with my mouse. Just click and let go. You see it joined my first circle to my second circle. And that'll give me a nice straight edge. So that's perfect if you're working around um, objects that have, yeah, that have nice straight edges. So I'm going to move down a little bit. Okay and work my way around the whole document. Now it's gonna get a little boring for you, but you'll see my techniques, okay? So I'm gonna click once there, and then hold shift, click a second time there. And I can continue holding shift and it will keep joining the lines up. When I get to these curved parts, it's probably easier just to go at it like a squirrel, okay? Just nibble away at the edges to get something that looks curved. Um, it does get easier if you zoom in closer, especially if you're doing these smaller parts. Okay, you can see here, small parts. I'm just gonna, lots of little clicks. Now there are lots of ways to clear cut. This is one way. Actually, this is the simplest way. Paint with a white paintbrush. If you're looking for other ways, I've got lots of other videos that um, in terms of the term you want, say you've done this and you're pretty good at it after a while, the next stage after this is to move into what's called a layer mask. Okay, and there are lots of cool ways. Another word is channel mask is a really cool one. I'm holding shift now and just use my paintbrush, go in caveman style. Okay, and this can be a little bit tedious, but to be honest, it's the simplest way. Okay, it's a little bit long, but and by holding shift, joining it up. Okay, in these corners here, if you do get to a bit where there's a sharper corner, you're gonna to have to lower your size of your brush. So up here, I've got my brush sizes. You might've seen me using a shortcut a second ago to change the brush size. I was using the square brackets. Okay, they're right next to the letter P on your keyboard. So the open, uh, the closed square brackets makes it bigger and the open makes it smaller. No shortcuts though, this is the easy way, the quick way, the no learning Photoshop, just super quick, easy way. These bits over here don't need much tidying up at all. Okay, you'll have different parts. Some parts are gonna be nice and easy like this. So there's just a little bit there. Holding shift, get rid of it. And there's gonna be some tougher bits like around here. So, can you see the shift keys helping me out? Using my bracket keys to get in the corner there. Bracket keys bigger. Hold shift. You might have to go to it a couple of times. If it goes horribly wrong, Okay, I'm doing it and I'm not making any mistakes really because I've done it loads of times. But if you are and you end up kind of like nibbling away too far into here, okay, you've got this option up here to go edit, step backwards, edit, step backwards, edit, step backwards, edit, step backwards. Can you see it's kind of slowly going through. Every time I click the mouse, it's going backwards. Edit, step backwards, edit, step backwards. There we go, back to where I was. So as soon as you see a mistake, try and go back and do it straight away and go through and hit undo. So going around the corner, there's lots of parts where like in here, how much of this is the jewelry and how much of it is just shadow. So this is where it comes down to you and deciding what should be taken out and what should be left. And don't be afraid to kind of zoom out and zoom in quite a bit to see, am I making a good job of it or is it looking quite fake? Okay, it's looking not bad around the edges there. So there's other parts. Say I wanna get rid of some of these bigger parts. What you can do is just increase your um, brush size. You could either do it up here, drag it up to say something like 300, or use your square brackets. And then it's what's called mowing the lawns, right? So I'm just gonna go around it to make sure all this bit is white. And you can see over here, I can make these bigger bits white. Okay. Mowing the lawns, I'm kind of like filling in all the big gaps. 
Okay, big gap's gone. And I'm gonna have to now go in with these splits here. Okay, and so I've got the big chunks gone. Get these bits gone, these bits gone. And now I'm gonna have to work my way through all of these smaller parts with a smaller brush. Okay, these links and stuff are gonna be painful because they are very kind of intricate and I'm gonna have to work my way around. Now don't be afraid as well if they're a little bit out of focus is to change your brush hardness. So my hardness is 90, you can make it a little bit fuzzier. So the hardness just makes the edge of the brush softer and you can see here, um, I'm just making it a little softer. I'll show you what I mean like in here. Can you see it's got a little bit of a fuzzy edge on it? So I'm gonna go to edit step backwards to get rid of that. And I'm gonna work my way around. Okay, and then I'd start my way around this. Okay, so that is uh, the blunt instrument version of making the background whited out. And um, remember the next step after this is things like layer masks and channel masks. But that's quite complicated and requires a little bit of knowledge of Photoshop. And the next part of the tutorial was how to change the metal color. So at the moment it's silver and I'm going to go through and change the color to say gold or copper or something else, okay? so. And the first thing you need to do is you need to go to layer and go to new and go to layer. Okay, I'm gonna call this one uh, gold. Okay, and I click the enter and I've got this new layer over here called gold. It's blue, so then I know it's selected. Now we're gonna to have to pick our gold color. So we're gonna go down here, instead of white, we're gonna click it and we're gonna pick gold. Now to do that, see this slider here, this is your hue. So if I wanted it to be pink, I'd pick a color in here, pink but I want it to be a kind of a goldy color. Now, obviously gold is a color, it's hard to pick. Um, I had a bit of a practice before the video and I felt like kind of one of these ochre colors did well, but this is up to you in terms of, like I'm no jeweler, I, in terms of the metal texture and colors, you'll be better at this than me. And um, so I'm gonna go through and I like say this color here. So make sure you click in here to pick the color. Can you see the different shades? And this is the color we're gonna end up with. Okay, so I'm gonna go about there. Roughly. Click OK. And I'm going to grab my paintbrush again. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a brush size that's a bit bigger. So maybe up to say something like, yep, something up to about 50 maybe. You can type it in there, 50. And hardness, um, I'm going to match, it needs to be the edge of this. Like th the nice thing about coloring it, it's really forgiving. Going around the outside with the white stuff, that's really specific and you could be really neat and tidy with it. But with coloring it, you don't. So it may look, um, not particularly great at the moment. You can use your shift click again. So I'm gonna zoom in a bit. But control or command plus. And you can see I've got these bits in here, but I don't have to be really specific. It's, it's better to probably stay away from the edges than it is to spin age it, you know, and, and accidentally get over the, over the top of it there. So I'm gonna start, it's really forgiving. You can just paint over all of this. Okay, and then Okay, you should go through now. I'll do this one side here. Holding shift. Yep, yep, yep. Cool. Um, you can see I've left the edges pretty loose going. I haven't done this bit yet, but I'll just to save time. Um, so I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. And next thing you need to do is what's called a layer mode. So I've moved back to my move tool for no good reason. Over here, this is what I want, this thing called normal. So you need to see a layers panel. If you can't find it, it's under window, layers. Okay, and this thing called normal. That's doing what we see here. Now, a layer mode is the way that this top layer interacts with the one underneath. So uh, I'm gonna move to dissolve. Dissolve never does anything. Okay, choose up the edges a little bit, never looks great. Darken starts working. Okay, so you can kind of see where we're going with this. It's not perfect, it's got a bit of a greeny color. Um, and you just work through this list. Now there's no magic one here. It really depends on the color that you're using and the image that's underneath. So it will be different every time. There'll be some kind of consistency. You see multiplies looking all right, um, but it's not really, it's kind of, the, I like these little highlights to be out. So I'm gonna move through color burn, it's better. Okay, it's a bit strong. Um, linear burn, you just keep working your way through. Now working through this list is a pain. Click, giddy, click, giddy, click, giddy, click. Go mad. Okay, so on a PC it's really easy. You click one of them, so click dissolve, and then just use your up and down arrows on your keyboard, just the plain old up and down cursors, okay? On a Mac it's a little bit more of a hassle. You have to use your uh, move tool, so you have to be selected on that. Hold down shift and hit the plus key, and that will toggle it through. If you're on a PC it's really easy, on a Mac it's a pain. 
So if you're on a P or Mac, be in your move tool, hold on the shift key and hit the plus key and it will toggle through all that can you see it changing over here. Okay, if I toggle through. And then you just work your way through and minus goes back, plus goes forward. And you can see soft lights looking quite cool. Is it looking goldy? Yeah. Uh, I'm working my way through the different options. So soft lights, one of them. Color is another one. L color burn. Okay, so it's one of those three feels like the right ones for me. So I'm gonna say there's one that's close. It's got the right kinds of bits, but it's a bit strong. Say like, um, which other one did I like? This one here, color. Say you really like it, but it's just a bit too strong. What you can do is, can you see the opacity here? The opacity will allow me to lower it down. Look, if I go to zero, it's black and white. So it's how, opacity is how see-through that layer is. And you can see, if I lower it down a bit, I can kind of like reduce the strength to something more believable or something do you like more, okay? Um, and that's how you go through and color, not just, we've done trying to make silver gold, but uh, you could do black and white photographs and make, everyone loves that bit where you have the scarf uh, you know, it's you in Paris with your scarf and you make everything black and white except for the scarf to be lovely and red. So you could make the whole thing black and white, make a new layer like we've done here in this gold layer and paint it on red and then play with these layer modes to try and kind of lift it off or it doesn't have to be a scarf obviously, but that's the effect. Right, um, so the next thing we need to do is we need to save it. And there's gonna be a two step process. And um, Photoshop was, uh, this file started life as a JPEG. You can see it up here, it was a JPEG. Now, because we've got an extra layer, Photoshop's going to want to save what's called a PSD, a Photoshop document. Now, that just means I can have, because uh, JPEG doesn't allow these separate layers. And these layers are useful, because if you come back on later on and you're like, oh man, what was I thinking last night? I need to come back and turn the opacity back up to make it stronger, um, you can do that. If I save this out as a JPEG now, it will flatten it all together and you'll never be able to get this adjustment again. Okay, so it's really handy to have a PSD. But the website needs to have a JPEG, okay? When we're uploading it to our man's website, it needs to be a JPEG. So the two-step process is this. File, save. And what we'll do is, can you see it's already named it as a PSD, which is great. And afterwards, I'm gonna put in hyphen working. This pop up, click okay. So that's my working version. I pretty much, you don't need to keep this working version if you don't want to, if you wanna keep it, you just flatten it and you don't care, it's all done. Um, but the PSD means you can come back later on and adjust these different layers. So I've done that now, now I need my JPEG that's gonna go up to a website, right? So I'm gonna to go to File, I'm going to go to Save As, and you're looking for JPEG. Now Photoshop likes to confuse you, don't worry about all these other ones, just use JPEG, okay, Draw by itself. Um, and let's go and hit save. No, actually, let's go and rename it. Okay, so working is probably not a great finish. And uh, let's call this one, never call it final. Final means, it's like the kiss of death. It means that you're gonna have to work on it for the rest of your life. So let's call this one uploaded. Okay, so that's the one I'm gonna upload. Maybe we will upload, it's gonna upload it to the website. Naming conventions, you might call it version one. Okay, so that you know that if you have to go and change it again, you can have a version two. I'm gonna call mine upload to make it nice and clear that this one's gonna be uploaded to the website, hit save. Now this little slider here, now it really depends on what you're doing with your website. We're gonna have our quality up quite high because I've seen the site that this is going up to and they want really super high quality stuff. So I'm gonna click okay. Now I'll have two versions on my desktop, actually three versions, I'll have the original, Okay, that came off the website. I'll have one that's called hyphen working. That's my one that is, um, has all the different layers and editable in Photoshop. And then I'll have my last one called upload. Okay, and that'll be my finished version. And that is how you go through and click out an image, change the color of the metal, and then save it out to be uploaded to a website. Now, my name is Daniel Walter Scott. If you want any other videos, go to bringyourownlaptop.com and use any of the forums there and ask and a good chance I'll make one. Make sure you like and subscribe. I will see you in another video. Hi da da, good YouTube people.